So uh, I'm en route right now to Regina. That's why it's a bit bumpy sounding. Um, so what Saul and I were discussing, he, he had uh, the idea of a, a compartment module map if given full reign over how modules are, are linked to one another. Um, might be a vector for a kind of attack that maybe people are not expecting. Um, that uh, we're projecting, but can you make the font much larger? Oh, this is not me. Um, ah. I think it's solid. Okay, uh, and that is large enough. Yes, thank you. So specifically, I think uh, what Solid communicated earlier as something like the same origin policy. But for packages, I think I understand a bit differently now uh, that if our module maps can only, for a given scope, like whether it's a package prefix or uh, an at symbol prefix or some prefix, um, the module map should only be able to rewrite references to other prefixes rather than rewrite things within that prefix. Um, I'm not sure how much that makes sense or if I need to explain a bit better or. So it's not a restriction that I, I, what I, what I have in mind that I think I want to do is more invasive than that. So I'd be surprised if that restriction were, um, were not, uh, did not cut off too many possibilities. So I'm, I'm curious about it. So uh, the main idea is that if if a package has subcomponents like submodules that are all part of that package, they would all lie under the same prefix. So Atagoric, for example, would be one of these prefixes. Uh, and what Sala was explaining is that before the idea of modules, we have bundles, right? So uh, people who write their code to function in a given package can depend that their code that they wrote uh, when interfacing with other parts of that same package can all be unified rather than the possibility of say somebody writing a replacement for Atagoric slash Harden and uh, it, although this isn't really a resource module, it's, it's uh, how do I explain? It's, it's not, it's, it's that uh, most packages cannot be resource modules in a sense. They may contain globals and references to other packages, but they themselves can't implement a resource because that's only possible by the host. So, so uh, there's, just, there's two notions of resource that we probably have mm -hmm. always had separate terminology for. Um, there's simply having top level mutable state. Right. And there's uh, having powers with regard to the outside world. I, I mean the latter one. So I should say powerful things. Uh, yeah, powerful is a good word. And I, and I tried to articulate um, um, where, where my, my concern came from. And, and like I, as I talked with Michael, like I'm not saying that we eliminate the ability to um, attenuate or to even overwrite a module. I'm just saying that um, certain um, restrictions cannot, um, cannot be guaranteed if they are not an initially there and then um, you know, removed. So, so um, okay, so, so quick example. Um, this is actually in Node right now. Uh, Node has uh, in the new module system export in the package.json. And in the exports field, you could block exporting from a folder, right? Um, and so um, modules inside your package are using relative um, module specifiers and they're getting access to modules in that folder, but your exports is blocking others from importing things in that folder. Um, the idea here is that if that was bundled, these things would, would, would all be, uh, you know, if you wrapped or whatever. Um, and, and so you're just writing your modules 
to um, you know connect to one another and and basically you, you just don't want people to have that particular instance of your module uh, you know for whatever whatever internal behavior it's doing um, what I discovered though is that uh, the same module implementation in node if if I'm outside the scope and I use um, you know a file an absolute file path to the same modules that are not being exported from a package, um, they would actually be accessible. And, and that kind of like, you know, it's a, <laughs> a, just, I guess, a, a side effect of trying to make sure um, Node.js optimizes um, no, uh, modules and doesn't create multiple instances. Um, so, yeah. so it kind of like, so yeah, like, I mean, it doesn't exist today. But bundling going away um, will be something that people will not do if their private modules are not private modules. Okay, so so I, I really like the idea that there is some kind of of bundle of modules that has a notion of exported mo modules exported from the bundle and modules yeah. private from the bundle, and associating yeah. with packages. I think is a, is a you know, perfectly sensible way to to do that. Um, um, that, that's, what, that's what carried. I would try. That, that's what I would try to advocate in the sense that when dealing with Jesse, for example, I found I would want to do separate modules for the reasons of factoring, but then to obey all the Jesse constraints between those modules made it very difficult to do the refactoring. I would I would have to put them all in one module to be a, a unified thing. Um, so that that's kind of a different direction. We're saying that a package or some kind of abstraction that says these are the exports uh, within this modules have access to one another. So the, what? for code that's written in Jesse, uh, I've always imagined that, uh, I mean, I've, we've been defining in fact as part of the definition of Jesse that all code written in Jesse are written as pure modules. Um, right. And for pure modules, this issue wouldn't much come up, right? Uh, this is where if, if we had, so for example, let, let's say, let's just call this a package because that's what node currently calls it as far as what gets exported from the top level. Uh, in, in writing things in Jesse, to make each individual module pure, uh, if there has to be some shared state, then I need to put that all in one module. But if we had a higher notion of package, then I could still separate that out into separate modules and say the package as a whole is pure. Uh, oh, no, maybe that's not saying it right. What, where does the need to share state uh, in the, the code you're concerned about arise? Specifically, when passing arguments to a function that's in another submodule, in Jesse, I have to be sure that those are hardened. But within the, within the Jesse module, I can do that without making sure that they're hardened. Um, a a non-SES related example from the ecosystem, if this, you know, if this is going in the spec, it's going to be used by people you know, who, you, who rely on the spec. Um, and, and so uh, just a JWT, like if, if you have um, uh, origin-based modules, uh, the browser- What is JWT? Um, uh, JSON Web Tokens. So, so if, if, if you're uh, serving your GitHub API as um, origin CSP modules, and these modules are, you know, um, are, are expected to hold on to a token um, and have a shared state, stuff like that. Um, you don't want to like use import maps, which has not yet been approved by other browsers, uh, Chrome maybe. Uh, you don't want to use import maps to insert someone in the middle and be like, okay, I'll, I'll extract that. You, you can instantiate a second instance of the module if you copy it elsewhere with service worker caching and all of that. Um, but that would not be the privileged instance that you're guarding internally. Um, I, I, 
I just want to stop for a second because I believe it's easy to get lost when we go off into this direction. I want to first make a case for the, the idea of a package being a balanced set of modules. Okay. And then maybe we could tackle this separately. Sure, sure. That makes sense. Yeah. But, um, okay. Michael, um, whenever we talk about packages, especially for an API like uh, compartment, um, mm -hmm. it becomes a little bit uh, uh, maybe of a mix of two different environments that should be separated. Um, okay. Because packages, we we, we want the um, we want the uh, uh, compartment API to be available in the browser, and the browser doesn't have the luxury of accessing a file system uh, in order to help in the resolution of uh, of modules. And, right, but uh, if if we have if we have something like the import maps then packages are simply the prefix of the bare specifier. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, but what you're talking about when you go uh, the next step after the, import, the package level or, or, or uh, you know, which in the um, uh, import uh, map specification is, a, is, is something that terminates with forward slash, um, it, you, you're getting into deep linking and Deep linking mm -hmm. of module is probably something, if we think more of a, about a browser environment between a, a yeah. client and a server, JF, we get, wait, can, yes? Can you define deep linking? Deep, well, it, it's something, it's a concept that uh, uh, Node uses when it defines the four types of linking between modules. Okay. And uh, deep linking is when you go and you get a specific file inside of a package. Yes. So, um, so that's, that's what they call deep linking. And I believe that once we get into deep linking, it's not a concern of the client or the uh, component API, but it's more about a, um, a uh, there we go, deep import specifier. And um, it's more concerned about how uh, the, the, the publisher or the server or whatever module that decides to export itself will accept or deny a, an, an access to something that's internal. So uh, yeah. the, it, it turns out that the module API can probably abstract that and not be aware of it. And that will probably work better in a client service situation like uh, we're, trying, we're trying to resolve also. So, uh, so Node, as Sal mentioned, has this idea of export maps where you can specify mm -hmm. what kinds of deep, exactly. deep linking are involved. Um, but but the, I, the, I, guess, I guess what I would wonder is can or, can or should our uh, compartment API respect such, such things? I think one question would be, um, would it be possible if the compartment API does not completely bother itself with this for an implementer to say, um, I'll add that layer and this layer will actually be, um, um, will, will, will be um, attainable, you know, because once you lose, um, if you start off with an environment that already violates your scope, Yes, I would not know exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes, yes I, exactly. Yeah. So the the way I I see this, um, um, and and this is why I was I'm starting with with the, the the review of the API from the principle of least authority is when we looked at the global. When I create a compartment in my environment, I can only pass to it the globals that I have access to. The same thing, the module map. I can only pass or deny what I have access to. So Correct. I can yeah. I can reduce the power. I can and maybe the module map can be a simple map between specifier to specifier. So between an, an alias and and what what it it, re, it actually resolves to in my environment. It can be a proxy. So I can do a dynamic lookup. But going any further than what the parent environment has, and also the parent environment, meaning the environment that is actually creating the compartment. And 
is is getting into um, it feels like in, in, in the case of of um, of the access API where they have a, a bit of trickery there it feels that it opens the door to something else that uh, goes beyond the capability that are given to to the parent environment so the parent should not be able to give access to module it doesn't have to and if and then it's deferred to the underlying system to do the rest of the stuff to know if there's any more restriction to this. So, so a question for you, Jaya. Yeah. So if I use the module map in a compartment and I took an, a, a file that wasn't in, in the scope, whatever that scope is, and I, I used it to overwrite one that is in, in a scope, mm -hmm. um, and, and I do uh, console.log import.meta.url, yeah. Would it would that code think it's running in the scope or will it think it's running from the source URL? Uh, because that, that means a lot in the browser um, as well. But but it also means a lot about what if that code relied on a file right next to it? Yeah. Um, that, that you see, this is this is where the 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 whole like uh, attempts to draft this over the past year. Uh, I think this is the best so far. Yeah, it is, it, and, and it is difficult. And you're touching so many aspects in that question. And I think it's probably the best question we need to ask. So let me, let me um, just first of all, first of all, if I can just finish, Mark, so really sorry. I want, I want to tackle three points really brief, briefly. Mm -hmm. First of all, if we talk about import meta URL, we're talking about an API that is I'm, in my sense, very problematic because it reveals uh, the uh, current file system, the current username, you know, by, just by me import meta, you know, if you're running on the Mac or, on a, or Windows or different types of system. And that violates the, uh, one of the principles that we want, which is uh, host, uh, preserve host virtualizability. Yeah. So right there, there's a problem, no matter um, with the compartment, if we have a compartment API or not, that's a problem that needs to be addressed. Um, the other aspect is, uh, which I forgot, uh, we should, <laughs> I think that's a, that's a more important one. <laughs> to me, that's right there, we, we, we try to resolve a, a hot potato that shouldn't be in the mix. So, I, uh, uh, sorry, Mark, you were making yeah, noise. JF covered everything I was gonna bring up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Including the forgotten point. <laughs> yeah. Including the forgotten. Yes. I, I, I think Ma Mark, Mark uh, and I were, were discussing about this a, a little while ago. We were doing running to the okay. code and, and, and poking around it, and then, and then it's like I think it's yeah. It's just we don't have to discuss a lot. It's just you know it's like you, you see file forward slash user with capital U. I know I'm on a Mac, and then you say I see my username. Like come on. Like these guys, so, I, I understand. Oh yeah, the other point is working with uh, 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 you know, on the web browser where you're gonna have between you and the file system different layers of, of uh, um, load balancers, uh, rewriters and, and, and all kind of trickery, uh, Akamai and all of that stuff in order to optimize the delivery of modules uh, makes the file system structure um, something that the, I believe the compartment API should not be aware of. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's really good. That actually covers one of my first points when Sal and I were talking about this. Is what if we make import.meta.url something that is just unrelated to where the module came from, and no. if or or don't serve it at all. Uh, and the other thing that the, the point that Salah made that that I that I um, am really interested in exploring is what if I have a module adagoric slash foo, and I say import dot slash bar, and I say import fs. I would expect from from that file that from that module that fs could be changed because that's outside of what I've written. But what makes this kind of bizarre is how the, the uh, compartment API of re remap modules 
we might remap that access of dot slash bar. Is that should that be allowed, or should that be something that we restrict? So I think I think that this I think that there is um, uh, a modularity, a, d a very distinct modularity. Um, uh, uh, the case Hi, of remapping things that cross the boundary, things that by which a package relates to its out, to things outside the package, the case mm -hmm. of mapping that as an imposition on that module by the system bringing the module in, a case for yes. that is very clear and uncontroversial. Um, yeah. The if we were dealing with um, uh, a, simply with a new world that is being built for the system we're creating, uh, I think that the case for not remapping within a package uh, would make sense. Given what we're actually trying to do, which is do the whole tof tofu plus manual policy decisions to mm -hmm. retroactively impose a lot of least authority constraints on ex existing code that was not written to live in that environment. Uh, I think that overall, we do need to, the flexibility for doing the invasive remapping as well. Yeah. But if we kept those two things conceptually separate, uh, that would be, you know, that might make things cleaner. But I do think we need to be able to do an invasive remapping. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that um, uh, I, I, I guess I guess what I'm wondering is if we can invasively remap or restrict access to globals, do we need to do invasive remapping of modules when they can't provide platform powers? At the very least, for mocking, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that's um, uh, that's something that Access is trying to do also, like in order to uh, provide different. Uh, like there's a module that believes, uh, you know, it requires a a powerful module, but you want to give it a an, atten an attenuated version of it. Uh, yeah, but again. that that by by this definition of what scopes are, where they're externally provided source code that can't have any powers, they gain uh, all the powers from the platform. Then do we need to remap things with it? There is what yeah. my question is. So, so this goes to uh, some of the discussions I've been having with uh, Kumavis about mm -hmm. in this case, um, where uh, you're where you're trying to you're trying to contain the propagation of possible corruption. So if okay. X, Y, and Z are all part of the same package, uh, but X needed to be given something powerful, um, uh, but uh, X doesn't need direct access to Z and somebody else is using Z, then if you can just diminish the potential propagation of corruption by putting X and Z in separate compartments or, or giving them, you know, se separate import maps or something. Um, oh, I totally agree with that. But my question is, if X imports Z, should we have X import a different thing besides Z? Or can we gain everything we need just from remapping the outbound modules? Uh, yeah, um, I, if, if we go back to the, what, who was presenting before? Um, there's something about the scope, right? That yeah. was, uh, uh, Sala was presenting. Okay. Yeah, I, I was trying to follow along with, you know, um, screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, the whole, um, Michael, are you talking about this uh, idea of a scope, a scope map? Well, I'm not even sure it's a scope map necessarily, but just um, in, it's, it's kind of, I hate to, to liken it to the same origin policy <laughs> because we don't have cores and we don't have all that other crap that comes with it, but Thank God. Uh, if, yeah. <laughs> if a given prefix is, it's, it's, essentially it comes down to prefix where the host can, controls the top level prefixes yeah. because those are the bare specifiers. And if we say that everything that belongs, everything that is within a certain prefix 
cannot, its, it's reference to other prefixes can be remapped, but references within the same prefix cannot be remapped. It's kind of the, the idea yeah. that I was so questioning. I, so I think that that restriction really ties our hands with regard to decoupling dependence within old code by configuration, i.e. With that, without having to edit the code itself. Um, but, but again, I, I ask, since within old code, every, ref every reference to powerful modules will be in a different prefix. So those are the powerful, things that I would say we can. Right, but, but the thing is, there's many modules within that bundle and the fact mm -hmm. that some of the that you know the fact that module X referent you know is given one outside power and module Z is given another outside power, mm -hmm. if the if we can diminish the possibility of contagious corruption from X to Z, mm -hmm. then we're diminishing the possibility that abuse of power of the power given to X is contagious oh. to abuse. Yeah. Possibility. I totally agree with that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. X's reference of FS and Y's or Z's reference of PROC or of process, that those are two different things for sure. Yeah. But I'm still, I, I'm still asking X's reference to Z. Can we remap the reference to Z to something completely outside that package? Or do we still have to, or, or do we instead have to contain the power within Jed's reference to process. Could I uh, could I just uh, put an idea well, out? Let, let, me, let, me just, let me just answer, Michael, just to clarify what I have in mind. This doesn't mean it's the okay. right answer, but I just want to... Absolutely, I want to hear. ...what I have in mind, uh, which is um, uh, the, the assumption that I'm making in the scenario uh, is that there's a certain degree of power that that we genuinely want to give to Z, to proc, let's mm -hmm. say. And the certain amount of power that we genu genuinely want to give to X with regard to FS. But yeah. we want to, to, to the extent that we can, um, uh, impose restrictions on the interaction between X and Z that we believe will not uh, prevent their legitimate interaction, but will impede contagion of corruption between X and Z. And, and one way to do that is to create, let's say X imports Z, to create, going back to the uh, to-do example, the microcosm to-do example, uh, by creating uh, an alt Z uh, from the mm -hmm. outside such that when X says it imports Z, it's really importing alt Z. Yeah. Alt Z was written from the outside with the knowledge of Z. Uh, right. Okay. The genuine Z, but then it attenuates it and then re-exports the attenuation for use by X. And that yes. alt Z was written manually, but it was, so it was written manually as kind of a um, as kind of surgery on the inside of the package. And the reason yeah. why distinguishing the legacy issue from what we would do in a clean mm -hmm. world is that yeah. the package is, nor is, is naturally the unit of separate maintenance. And this outside yeah. surgery into the midst of somebody else's package is a violation of the unit of separate maintenance as an encapsulation boundary. It yeah. means that if yeah. the author of the package update does an internal refactoring, this yeah. outside surgery might get broken. But yeah. right. that's the, the burden of legacy, I think that we need to support that kind of outside surgery. Mark, I think it's also time to tie this to the discussion we had about how in excess um, the concept of uh, the, the uh, Compact API is mixing together uh, the concept of uh, access and authority. Um, and uh, there needs to be something, something different in, in there. And by that, I mean, 
probably the easiest way to understand that is uh, uh, the compartment the uh, compartment API, API should be probably something along the proxy API which is the proxy is not a membrane, but is the API that can be used to create membranes. And um, when we start, uh, when we want to apply um, compartment to a, a package that uh, was never been built with uh, packages in mind, then we are, um, we're doing some, we're doing a trickery from the outside. And, what can be done there could be totally different than what can be done if that compartment was itself, oh, sorry, that package was itself using the compartment API internally in order to itself reduce powers to what it yes. wants to have access to. Yes. That's very different. So another example, another segue to this is like the, um, what is done with lava mode in order to reduce authority in an overall system will need to use the compartment API and can do a situation where two, a, a, a parent component like a, an importer imports an importee without having to do itself. Like I don't have to grant the importer more power because it needs to feed it to the importee. That doesn't happen in a situation of lava mode because lava mode can uh, uh, provide more power to a child and then to to a parent, which is not the, the case okay. where hold, the parent is itself importing a, a a child with a compartment. Th th this is this is where you always lose me. Uh, is um, I, I I need a, a hard I, I please re-explain that with a hard distinction between parent child right the creation hierarchy. The creation, versus, yes, and the authority, yes. Versus yes. importing. Yes, because, yes. Because the existing code does not express any parent-child relationship between modules with regard to creation. Yes, correct. The, Sorry. The, yeah. the existing code only expresses an import relationship. Yes. And therefore, all expression of parent-child uh, would be new code using the compartment API. Yes. Uh, and that does seem like for the, for that parent child relationship, it's necessarily the case that the, ch that the parent can't grant to the child any more power than the parent has. Yes. Yes. If, if, if the parent is using uh, the compartment API, but if it's an environment that takes code that's never been written with that system, then uh, then it can do more things than than, uh, than than this, like like the lava mode situation. So foo imports bar. Lava mode can say, I'm going to give foo just what it needs, and I'm going to give it in bar just what it needs. Right. Bar might want to have, to have access to XML HTTP request. But I don't need uh, lava mode doesn't need to give it uh, to to foo that imports bar. It right, because foo is bar. not the parent of bar. Exactly. So exactly. Uh, so what I would ask there is that if foo uses the compartment API to impart to uh, arrange for a new instance of bar, does it get yes. a new instance of bar, or does it only get what it was given for bar? It uh, it only a uh, bar can uh, foo can only create bar using that uh, uh, compartment API if foo itself has access to all of what bar needs. Good, and we can pass it to it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it's it's very like Mark like in in that discussion we were we we're looking at the uh, access API and, and Mark really like took a step back and said, "Whoa, look at this." We access is, is kind of mixing the creation yeah. uh, 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 and, and, and the authority uh, into exactly. one API, which is, which is a little bit, yeah, that, that and other things. Yeah, yeah. The, when you mentioned the name of a module in the top level module position, the first argument of module constructor, it's creating a new instantiation, whereas when you pass it through 
as a as as a mod on the module mapping, not in that first position. It's pa passing through, as far as I understand, access to an existing instance rather than creating yeah. instantiation, and that's just yeah. confusing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It okay. works for their use case because they don't. It looks like what they're trying to do is. I need to attenuate, attenuate uh, certain modules, like uh, a little bit like uh, what MetaMask is doing with a plugin system. Like I want to provide uh, developers the way to load something without uh, having uh, to defend against, uh, having to review code because it might make a light bulb flash too fast. I can attenuate the powers that I give to that uh, flasher uh, module so I can restrict the, uh, the 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 light bulb flashing speed or color or whatnot or brightness and stuff like that. So yeah, okay. Could but I... it doesn't have to do it. Like a, a module is doesn't necessarily need to uh, do the lava moat uh, or lava moat on steroid uh, uh, case. Where I would say lava moat is at the package level currently, but uh, it could go further than the package level. It could go uh, deeper in, in into it, which would would be lava both on steroids. Okay, so so all, all this talk, um, just an idea came to mind. Uh, if I have a package that in it has internal or privates or whatever, internal modules is a good way to call it, um, and uh, it exposes a um, um, a bundle like collected version of itself and a single instance that does not expose the instances of the internals, then we can say, okay, it compartmentalizes that graph um, and exports star from the, uh, um, you know, the entry point that would have been the uh, outer um, facing interface of, of the bundle. So, so it could be that, you know, at this point, modules creating the compartment API would um, would not have the benefits of um, you know binding against things that are coming from compartments unless we say okay let's do a syntax that would allow a module to be a compartmentalized exporter um, that creates the compartment um, wires the modules and uh, determines what would be exported and all can be done uh, synchronously basically. So in this case, yeah, in this case, the question is, is bundling a technology that people need if they want to have just one module with all their authority stuck to it? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> which, which uh, currently, the, 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 I think I understand what you're saying is that if I start from main and I go to uh, deeper and deeper in the module, I, I have main becomes a concatenate concatenation of uh, all authorities required by all of this child at one point. Is that what you're talking about? Um, yeah, because uh, at least at least I'm talking about the least authority thing is that if if bundling still stays in the picture and people discover, oh, well, if I don't bundle, then they can mess with my module in these ways. Yes. <laughs> Will it just drive more people to bundle? That's <laughs> my question. Yes, and, and, I, and I believe that um, um, that's that's a valid concern, but I believe it doesn't lie in the compartment API. I okay. believe that's a decision on the uh, node resolution process of modules in general, and uh, to whatever web server implementation uh, that might want to uh, serve modules, uh, because now more and more uh, web pages can load modules individually instead of loading bundles. Michael, let me. Mm -hmm make sure I understand what the concern is here. Uh, you're saying that if our system allows this invasive modification of the internals of a package, uh, that people will seek to evade our surgery on their package by changing their system into something for which our invasive surgery does not apply. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, I, I'm kind of suggesting that. And it, it goes from the other way too, that uh, if two functions in the same module have a different, um, have a different 
interface between the two than they do when they're in separate modules, then that kind of drives things to go into one module. And on the other hand, um, oh, I hope I don't miss this. <laughs> the, the other thing that I was thinking about was how it's, it's commonplace in our modules to uh, destructure globals at the module level and then use those destructured functions later uh, because we're defending against people changing the globals. Well, e even, even if the compartment API is for good reason and we have great reasons to do this surgery, uh, a talented a attacker like Xmilia <laughs> could use the compartment API to break the links between modules that were supposed to be close together. That's kind of what I'm saying. I'm, I did not understand that latter point. Like if, for example, so, so if, for example if, for example, um, the X module imports FS and writes something to, and writes the contents of an environment variable to something, and the Y module imports PROG and lo loads the environment variable, then we could replace... When you say environment variable, you're talking about a variable in what namespace? Oh, okay. I, I mean environment, like I'm talking if we're running a node. You're talking about Unix environment variable? Unix environment, yeah. Well, the, um, yeah, I mean, if they can communicate through environment variables, then you're in a different threat model than what I'm concerned about. I'm not talking about communication through it, if environment they can, variables, they have, but they read, if, if they have read write access to, the, to a common environment variable namespace, then they're in communication. Yeah, um, I, 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 okay, let's take out the environment stuff. If, if we're just dealing with X writing to FS and it uses Y to give Y a secret and then Y gives us something back to write to the file system. Okay. This is the kind of bizarre trust thing that uh, the partitioning of modules does not matter in this case when it's just a regular program. But when, uh, this takes, it took me a long time to understand because I think JF and Karidi were also talking about this, the idea that replacing a prototype or poisoning a prototype could also lead to the leak of secrets, just information that wasn't supposed to be given uh, because people aren't expecting that boundary to be a potential trust boundary. They're just saying, oh, my code is factored better if I do it this way. So, so okay, so, so let me just, so what I have in mind um, so the scenario you're raising is, is, a, is outside of the scenarios I had in mind. Uh, so it's good that you're raising it because I hadn't considered it. Uh, to be, so to be very explicit, I had in mind basically that there's old packages that are written without no, any knowledge of our system. And there mm -hmm. are new packages that are written with knowledge of our system. And the old packages are clearly not written to evade anything our system is doing because by assumption, they're written without knowledge of our system. And they're not written to have any security properties because they were written to a JavaScript that didn't have any security properties. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the, what I was imagining with regard to the invasive remapping was only with regard to, you know, re invasive, invasive remapping, meaning within the package, uh, is only with regard to the old packages. And with regard to the new package, yeah. I was not thinking about invasive remapping because the new package being a unit of maintenance, treating it as a encapsulated unit that somebody else's, whose internals are somebody else's responsibility is good, yeah. but the third case that you're bringing up, uh, let me just state it to make sure we're in sync, is that if we provide the invasive mechanism whose purpose is to do surgery on all packages, then some will use it to do surgery on new packages, and then yeah. new authors of new packages will find the um, that they're drawn into defending that let's call it abuse of the surgery mechanism because using the surgery on new packages was not the intended use of the surgery mechanism. So, 
so I guess what I was getting to is that this surgery mechanism uh, is much better accomplished by just copying the package into your own and then doing the surgery as you need it and calling it your own namespace. Because any surgery you do will likely, or not likely, but it may be broken by upgrades to the package and the dope and stuff. Yeah. So if you want to invasively rewrite something in the package, use the source code. Don't use a runtime evaluator. Well, if, 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 it, if the surgery can be accomplished from, from, from the outside with knowledge of the inside, um, without actually requiring you to modify the thing, but, just, but wrapping it in a, in a sort of an attenuator or whatever the way you said, that's still, you, you made this point earlier that it's still brittle in the face of maintenance. Yes. Um, it, I think it's, it's brittle in the face of ordinary maintenance, not, not just uh, uh, yes. changes made in, the, in attempting to evade this mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, it seems like if you're going to, to, to have that, there need, it needs to be somehow associated with whatever <laughs> you're using to make sure you've got version compatibility or something, version tracking, so that this is applied specifically to some specific version of them so that the surgery module itself will will explicitly break right. Right. if what it was designed to work with changes. That's, that's a good point, which is the normal, let's say, SEMVR notion of an upward compatible change right. is not mm -hmm. compatible with regard to the surgery. That's right. Uh, um, and now that- Even if it's a bug fix change, yeah. Because right. if, it's not a published, if it's not a published API, the surgery might still touch it. That's, that's right. right, that's right. And, and uh, this conversation is making me queasier Right. about the surgery because, and it's particularly and, making queasier because it's, it's making me realize that it's analogous to a programming paradigm that I've always detested for exactly yeah. the reasons. Monkey patching. Uh, which is uh, aspect-oriented programming. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and I, I detest it exactly because something that should be a invisible internal refactoring instead breaks dependent um, uh, aspects. Yeah, I, because yeah. aspects were invasive. I refer to this as programming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and, and worse yet, you can't tell if they've, if they've factored the code in a certain way. You don't know that your aspect has failed. That's, <laughs> that, that, that's So that's all correct. Um, so you've succeeded at making me much crazier about this. So um, I want to make a counter. Um, I think that vendoring a dependency is equally dangerous in a very uh, I'm sorry, different what, kind of what, way. What does vendoring mean? Copying it into your own uh, right. source tree. Um, so we've seen multiple attempts of trying to essentially have duplicated modules as we've tried to roll out uh, ES modules in Node. Um, when people naively do this, they often encounter errors, unfortunately. Um, some of them are from ID identity discontinuity of the package itself. Uh, some frameworks like React, if you load two different versions of React, into your code base, they do not play well together. Um, other things like various styles of loggers, things that are stateful in some way or have some sort of shared resource, uh, also fail because they expect to have uh, either some sort of guarantee about the references that they're operating on and so once you start passing references between them, their backing stores don't match up, their IDs might not match up or other things. Um, in general, if you look at dual packages, they suffer exactly this kind of uh, problem of duplication where a lot of people tried to ship both a common JS version of their package and an ES module version of their package. So they actually just shipped two different versions. And what they noticed was by duplicating things, 
they well, encountered a very large and very problematic kind of error where even though the React team has always only shipped common JS uh, versions of React, when they tried to ship an ES modules version, they had to revert back down to shipping common JS just because the problem was so bad. That's interesting. Wow. This happened to a lot of their libraries as well. Almost all the GraphQL libraries encountered the same issue. I think the issue <laughs> first first started happening, uh, the uh, discontinuity um, was, uh, I guess, a staple of early uh, web components experiments on uh, NPM. Um, so they used Bower, and this way um, um, they used a flat dependency tree. And NPM without yarn um, basically meant that web components were duplicated in the chain if they were dependencies of each other. Um, and of course, in web components, you have a fatal, uh, like you can guard against it, but if you do a custom elements.define of something already defined, uh, you basically throw and, you know, the boilerplate just to not make the call twice is something that people were not doing. So I guess, you know, this, this kind of perpetuates now with ESM. <laughs> Yes, I'd agree. I agree. I guess, I, I guess this kind of brings me back to if we could define some kind of plat cross-platform way to do what the Node.js export maps do, where a module or a package, whatever the layer is that we're talking about, declares these are the sub-modules that are allowed to be imported, then if somebody doesn't declare any of those, we say, it's it's the top level module that needs to be modified, uh, or and this I guess this still doesn't uh, address Mark's concern for why we need deep surgery. Um, I'm just thinking that when somebody declares a module in the export map, they're essentially saying this is part of the public API, so that makes it fair game for surgery without these words. The, I mean, the, the thing I'm, I'm defining as invasive surgery is where you're, you're, you're modifying the internal coupling within the package. The coupling between the, the, the package and other packages, uh, that's always been something I've considered fair game, and I thought that was sort of an assumption in the conversation. So yeah. what I'm saying is if package, if package foo exports X and Y, as well as the root foo, if it exports Y, it means we can replace it and be fairly confident that the, the API surface has not changed because it's being used. It, it might be used internally, but it's been exported and advertised as an external interface. So, so, I'm, not, so I'm not sure what you're saying. The non-invasive form, which is the only form I would consider for non-legacy, uh, is, is that the exporting of Y be remapped as far as other packages importing Y, uh, and with regard to internal modules within that package that are also importing Y, they would only get the genuine Y. They would not get the remap. Right. Ah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the non-invasive? That's the non-invasive, and that's the only thing that I would ever recommend for non-legacy. Okay. So may, maybe if there was a way of a uh, formerly legacy package to say, I'm no longer legacy, what about, then maybe that would address this? Yeah, what about one of these export maps? If there's an export map, then it's, not sub, it's no longer subject to surgery. Ooh, that's pretty nice. So we actually do something similar for uh, self-resolution. Historically, you could have a dependency with the same name as your package. Um, if you include uh, exports field in your package JSON, uh, then 
the name of your package will always resolve to your current package. So we do have a similar behavior where enabling export maps at all does kind of uh, change our resolver very slightly to prevent what is an unattractive legacy feature. So it's kind of like the strict mode for package JSON? Mm, for <laughs> resolution, kind of, yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it, it's an opt-in to a better behavior that because it's opt-in doesn't break uh, legacy code expecting a worse behavior. Yes. That, that kind of opt-in would uh, solve basically all of my concerns that uh, it wouldn't drive people towards doing things that would break us. It would drive tw people towards making better modules. Right. It means that if somebody wants to defend themselves against invasive surgery, just put up an export map. It can be a degenerate one. It can just be there, there only to say, look, I'm part of the new world. Like you, like you said, it's like a use strict. It's an opt into the new world. Yeah. And if, if uh, somebody wants to implement a intelligent web server, um, the web server could have a module that understands the ex export map and just do the right thing to hide whatever is not on part of the export. Yeah, the question for what to do on the web is interesting because they'll probably just do their own thing. <laughs> but, well, ho hopefully uh, coming out of this group is exactly something we're proposing for the language, not yeah. for Node or for the web server, but yeah. because we're proposing it for the language, we're hoping it will be everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting to develop web pages without having to, to do a bundler um, and just use the web API. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite in interesting where it leads us to. Um, and the two APIs are, are getting so close to each other. What's supported in the browser uh, compared to what is supported in Node, it's it's great to have that same um, lateral movement capability between the two environments. Yeah, the 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 host that is interestingly different, that it's good that we are paying so much attention to, is XS, uh, mm -hmm. because they want their typical configuration to be that all of the static modules, you know, the, the, the processed module source text um, uh, is all loaded ahead of time and that yeah. all of this, but, but, but that the, with the compartment API, you've got the ability to do dynamic configuration, wiring, least authority decisions for putting these static things together. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a, a without, without any assumption of new runtime evaluators uh, uh, at runtime. And I think that's a very interesting additional constraint on everything we're doing that we wouldn't have come to just starting from Node in the browser. Yeah. Yeah, looking yeah, at I, I, different uh, exp experimentation, uh, including access, uh, own um, conclusion is is interesting because it feeds back to um, a better uh, overall solution, it, it, which is, I believe, what you're saying, Mark. Yeah. Uh, by the way, yeah, and, people and, here have not for, seen Peter Hadi's uh, talk with the light bulb. I recommend it. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so uh, to, to come back to what I was saying about Jesse, if we had the notion of export maps for Jesse too, then that would allow us to drop the membranes between modules that were part of the same package, essentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. And, and somebody who wants to implement something like lava mode could Put a membrane between things. Yeah, it becomes it becomes a separate decision. Yeah. The let me just make sure I understand, uh, Michael. The membrane you're concerned about is the uh, membrane. Uh, uh, the, 
the, the module static rules, like of, of what needs to be hardened specifically and what constitutes this capture or foreign this capture. Okay. Yes. Um, so, you know, the, the member, the boundary needs to be between Jesse code and SES code. And mm -hmm. uh, where the, the further you can push that boundary, the better. Yeah. Because then we just wouldn't allow SES code to import module foo implementation.js. Uh, where it w would be logical, like what I found in Jessica is it's logical to divide up the interpreter into the different layers of parsers that we have. But when I do that, the, the rules for hardening things between modules uh, get in the way a lot and they're going to force a lot of contortions unless we can somehow say Justin and Jesse and Jason are all part of the same package, allow them to share stuff. So I'm, I'm surprised to hear this. I'd love to see some examples. Um, yeah. The, I've, I've generally been thinking about Jesse in terms of static hardening rules uh, that are, don't really care that much about module boundaries uh, rather than membrane rules. But, it, but, but I have not been, but, I've, but I've, I've known that that story was not adequate for the this capture issue. Yeah, it's if it would be the same with static rules if we did separate compilation for every one of those modules. But as a holistic thing, we could say, oh, this only exports from this particular module. All the other modules don't need the hardening rules between them. I, okay, so I'll just, I'll just postpone reacting until I see an example. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll have to bring that up next week or, or sometime, yeah, sometime okay. later, just I'm away from a laptop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, 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 that's interesting. Could, it could lead to interesting behavior, though, if um, what is happening between module uh, is not, depending on the hierarchy between modules, the hardening will be different. And because hardening can be transitive, um, a, a module can work differently if it's imported in, in, in a different approach, right? So if foo imports bar and foo exports something of bar, then the hardening will impact bar uh, yes. if it's used by foo. But then if another module uses bar, then the hardening will not be applied. So so, so well, internal, it, it, it would, it, it, that, would have, that would res, that would result in bar having to hard, no matter what the other uses were. Yeah, if if bar is written in Jesse, the yeah. the Jesse correctness constraint, which we're trying to figure out how to implement what what you know what balance of runtime mechanism versus static checking, but the constraint yeah. we need to implement is that for any object defined by bar. Uh, there is no notion of a mutable, there is no vis observable notion of a mutable property that um, by the time anybody else can observe any object that, that bar created, uh, yes. it's complete, it's always hardened. Nobody can, can observe a non-hardened object created by bar. Okay, okay. And, 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 and uh, nobody, including foo, which is part of the same package or so that's, that's the, okay, so, so now we get into the negotiation. Um, what's been in my head is that it's at fine grain, uh, which is yes, even if foo and bar are both part of one package and they're both in Jesse, that by the time foo can see something that it must have already been hardened. Okay, yeah. And I th yeah. think Michael is asking for something somewhat weaker than that. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying, not really bar, but foo impl, for example, that uh, we have some common utility modules that bar and foo both use, but those utilities are not, is not in a module that's exported from the package. Okay. So uh, for the sake of code deduplication, I want to use the same function in both foo and bar. Okay. But this code deduplication is part of construct, is 
would, for example, be able to interact with an object that Foo made with the same constraints that if Foo was in the same module as the utility, if the utility function was in the same module as Foo, then it would have, it would be able to access to something that doesn't escape. So it would be able to use an unhardened object. That's, so, that's kind of what I'm getting to. Okay, so let me, let me make sure I'm understanding um, uh, the, the, harden, the static hardening rules that I was thinking of is such that even with, among functions within one module, if the thing gets passed as an argument, then it must already be hardened. It could not be able to even be passed as an argument in a function call uh, uh, because at that point you're, you're, you're beyond the alias analysis that, uh, that we can statically rely on. It's, you know, that, that, um, that it's only for, you know, for essentially a, a kind of um, uh, unaliased variable um, uh, uh, holding on to a value like a Rust ownership. Mm -hmm. And that as soon as right. you get beyond that unaliasing, that you must harden. Okay. And if, if you did something that severe, then... Yeah, then you can't raise your chill. Right, then putting things in one module doesn't make a difference if they're still separate functions. But then you still have to put, then it drives you to put the same things in the one function, right? Right, I mean, that's what it drives you towards writing hardened everywhere, which is what I've imagined, which is what I've been trying to do when I write in Jesse. Right. And the, the way I've been thinking of Tessie is that Tessie is, uh, T Tessie, just for everybody, um, is a <laughs> subset of a syntactic subset of TypeScript that corresponds to Jesse being a syntactic subset of JavaScript. It's essentially yes. the, the corresponding subset of TypeScript. Uh, but since uh, syntactically, but since TypeScript already has to be transformed into JavaScript, as soon as you've taken the step to Tessie, you're no longer in a no translate system so that we can additionally define the Tessie to Jesse translation to do something that the TypeScript to JavaScript translation does not do, which is um, uh, to insert a harden every place that Jesse insists on a harden so that the output of the translator passes the Jesse static rules. And that means that yeah. the Tessie programmer never has to write those hardens. They're provided for them. Uh, so because, what because I, you have what the support I, oh, of the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so what I, uh, what I found in writing Jesse with the strict harden rules is that it drives the one, it drives everything into one function. It's, discourages modularity by breaking out separate functions. And then when I relaxed that to just the module, I found <laughs> that discouraged modularity by breaking out into separate modules. <laughs> so I, I, I guess I'm... So this is where I have to see an example. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It sounds like you're making use of mutability well in excess, property mutability, well in excess of what I imagined anyone wanting to do in Jesse. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have the uh, keyword this, does it? That's correct. Jesse no. doesn't have this. All right. So so TypeScript probably Tessie works better um, than than TypeScript does because this in TypeScript, yeah, you you, you don't want to use this in many cases. Yeah. There's there's this further hope with Tessie that um, at this point is just a hope because nobody is, uh, I believe, has done much investigation of this. And Michael, correct me, if anybody has, it would be you, so correct me if I'm getting this wrong. But the hope is that if the escape from declared types in Tessie is only 
the TypeScript unknown rather than the TypeScript any, that it's possibly the case that Tessie uh, might be statically type safe. Uh, right. The distinction between unknown and any is if the variable foo is of type any, in TypeScript, it's, it's perfectly valid to say foo.bar. Whereas if it's of type unknown, you must first do effectively a dynamic type test that ensures that it's actually a kind of thing that, impl that has a bar property, a typed bar property, and only then can you do a foo.bar. So these dynamic type tests are like the dynamic casts in Java. Is uh, um, Java is statically type safe, not that you won't get any dynamic cast failures, but in the sense that all of your, that pro well, prior to Java generics, Java generics screwed this up. But prior to Java generics, Java, you could say that Java was statically type safe in that the only runtime type failures was cast failures. Um, or, you, you know, um, using, going through the reflection API, which is another matter. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's accurate so long as the, the, the functions that assess the types are correctly typed themselves and they don't use any dynamic cast. And that's, uh, that's, or the dynamic cast in TypeScript is actually just a static override, much like casting in C. So we have to eliminate that as well as any. I didn't understand all that, but um, uh, I, 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 it might be because I just don't know TypeScript at all well enough. Well, yeah. So, so what I was thinking is that if if the if the static Jesse rules are outside the body of a function, a, a data object must be hardened then we can transform all these sets of modules into a single function that exports, that returns a set of exports, much like CommonJS. And within that body of that function, uh, the Jesse rules are relaxed because it has no static demand for exporting a value. So I guess, I guess what I'm talking about is the tension between that doing such a rewrite versus uh, just being able to say, yes, this set of modules are within this, the bounds of a package or, or this larger thing that has, uh, that by and large doesn't import any, or sorry, how can I say this? It, it just, just that it is structured in a way that allows comprehension without running into the, the side effects of having to harden everything. And I only found this when writing Jessica as a big enough program that the the single blocks of code, like uh, in the quasi parser generator, there's a huge function that does a lot of stuff. And uh, when I was writing code from scratch, it wanted to be for comprehensibility. I wanted to separate it into different modules rather than having this one giant function again. But um, the only way to kind of bypass and get back more mutability than Jesse maybe allows is to have one function. Okay, so, so the thing that's just you know, consistently surprising me here, we're, we're just gonna postpone it until we have an example, is yeah. why there's such a strong need to program with mutable properties. So, uh, sorry, you're asking a question? Well, I'm saying that that's, that's the question we need to come back to when we can have an example in front of us. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, it's unintuitive to me that mutable properties are that important a thing to program with. And, and that may just be the case, that I'm, I'm trying to do something uh, different with the interpreter and structuring it that way, and maybe I can't, or maybe I need to use a layer of indirection. Okay. 
Yeah, it's also yeah. the uh, there's, like, uh, there's also the uh, similar. Um, uh, it's it's along the same line. It's like um, if you only have um, if if you bundle everything into uh, into one one environment, one a large environment. And it's much harder to understand what is going to be exported by that environment and what is going to be the impact of hardening on whatever property exported. So if by breaking it down in smaller pieces, which are all isolated with harden, uh, I believe that you get a much more reliable um, and predictable uh, behavior of what is where does where the mutable state uh, resides? Uh, because uh, you know some something that happens to be exported is not hardened, but uh, only when it's uh, exported becomes hardened. So it there, there could be a yeah. an interesting cold path there. So my, <laughs> my my my, re, my reaction to this would be okay. I must divide things into uh, smaller bits. I, I'm, it, it's easier to debug. I, I think uh, what I have to do is actually continue the exercise to attend and say, uh, this is what I needed to do to implement uh, the mutation of state as a, as a modular, modularizable kind of thing. Right. And uh, if, if I do that, I, I mean, I have a strategy for doing this, but I haven't done it yet. And I want to see, it, do I end up with something that's better than if we have uh, the boundary at a higher level. Okay, because it's specifically, it's not the mutation of state, it's specifically the mutation of properties. Yeah. Yeah, okay. which, which I accepted into the Jessica program simply by providing a site compute index endowment. So it's something that bypasses one of the Jesse restrictions just to be able to build up objects piece by piece instead of having to create a separate data structure that I append to and then reapply that into an object. Okay. Yeah. But, um, so I won't get to the example until I've actually put in the work to make sure okay. it's uh, worth talking about. <laughs> okay. So we drifted into Jesse from uh, a larger discussion of modules that yeah. wasn't Jesse specific. Uh, were there stacked up issues? Uh, should we get to uh, Sala's uh, compartmentalizing modules? I, I think it was really covered by the discussion. I mean, it's it's a just the gist has been updated since last week. Last week was um, my my attempt to do it uh, live, and it was really crude. Um, okay. so, so I just updated the same gist, um, and it's in the chat. Um, yeah. So, so the thing that you wanted to talk about is what we have been talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's the the big discussion is it, and I, I I was showing it on the screen as we talked. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think the opt out of invasive surgery is exactly what's needed. Yeah. 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 To be able to say that my my yeah. modules should be. Uh, can be uh, altered by modifying their public interfaces, but we're, we're not going to let you pierce past that. Yeah. So, Good. So I, I, I just added one example to the gist. Um, I mean, it's a very crude example, but I've been editing that without, you know, being under, um, you know, while not presenting. So I'm just going to show it quickly on the screen. Um, so, so we talked about exporting from compartmentalized instances. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is not the kind of syntax we want. Uh, yeah. But it should be possible for a module to say, listen, there's only one reference to that compartment chain, and it's being exposed. Um, and you basically cannot override anything um, I'm doing here to expose that public facing interface. You, you could override that module and attenuate it or replace it altogether, uh, which you know does not in invade um, 
whatever it does in its own compartment. Oh, oh, I see. The second argument to new compartment that we're seeing on the screen, that's sort of like the configuration file um, uh, that we were seeing when we were looking at the to-do list example. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I'm just winging a compartments API, and I'm just saying whatever the API decides, somehow mm -hmm. uh, the modules would expect somehow to know whether or not they are yep. being bootstrapped safely. And if they are, they know they can do whatever they need. If they're not, they can be like, okay, well, I'm just going to export undefined or something. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah, there's also already, and uh, like I think it's, they call them uh, module attributes, a proposal that would say, um, I'm importing and the type of this import is WASM or JSON or whatever. Um, so, so extensions of um, module syntax um, are, are potentially being talked about already, so. Oh, oh, that's the using at the end of that line. Yeah, like, okay. I mean, everything is already used in other places. So, I mean, other languages, so. Interesting. Oh, where you're, where the using, what you're providing to the using is a function from UUID. Yeah, and, and this is a proposal. UUID is a proposal. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, just mixing some, some, um, leading edge things. Okay. If it would be an error function or not is not really the point. Just that, you know, that compartment does not, you know, um, you know, does not does not really, uh, you know, escape from this expression or this statement. Interesting. Huh. That is a very interesting piece of code you just put in front of us. Yeah, well, hopefully it doesn't look that ugly when it's like part of the spec, but, but the intent, right? So Yeah, you're, you're bringing together several concepts that have never been brought together before, and it's really, it's very interesting. Yeah, as long as I don't have to explain it in words, it kind of works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the spec is, is, is where uh, it gets interesting. I can, I can show you a, a different approach. Like you're working on the export. I can show you a, a, a way to, uh, I've been looking at this uh, from, the, from, uh, from the other way, from the uh, import side. Okay. Um, so you can, see, you can see my screen? Uh, yes. So what I want the API to be used for is a simple way for somebody to express uh, Polar to say, I'm importing something but I don't trust it. I want to use something that easily allows me to control that import. So uh, going from a static import to a dynamic import and then to a compartment API provides a, a natural gradation where um, mm -hmm. I can suddenly um, use uh, with very minimal amount of code uh, the right attenuation that is required for the module I want to use. Oh, uh, dot, I just saw the dot import at the end of that line. Correct. And okay. the dot import behaves like a dynamic import in the sense that it returns a promise. And then um, it, I believe, and this is what I'm looking at, as, as a way to implement this, it might be a lot easier than uh, ha having to do it at the static level. Oh, 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 oh. So this is, this is very interesting. So this is um, the, 
there's, there's no longer a top level module specifier as an argument to the compartment constructor. Correct. The compartment constructor does get, does create a, you know, a, a polar environment uh, that, um, that modules can be instantiated into. Yes. And then import is sort of like our evaluate module. Correct. But, okay. Okay. This is very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And uh, so one of the, the, when we started looking at this type of approach with Monable, one of the objections was that um, um, like the whole uh, dynamic aspect of uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, async resolution process that, that you have to go through when, when you, you want to do multiple imports. And, and I believe that get, this gets around their problems. I'm going through the spec and trying to see if something is like this is possible. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, in terms of ergonomics, I, if I want, what I want to express, which is polar in an environment that I already understand, uh, I think this uh, uh, is, the, is very, very least intrusive and gives me the, um, the attenuation that I require. Okay. And the name foobar would have to be found in the module map provided. Yeah, yeah exactly, that. exactly, okay. exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and now the module map is, uh, uh, I have this somewhere somewhere else in, in, the, uh, in the API, which is the, the module map is, um, is uh, I'm, try, I'm going through the current proposal of the module map, uh, except I, the thing is the, the scope, I'm less confident about it, but it's, it's the idea that um, the globals and the module can only be passed if you have access to them. So the resolution will respect your current resolution. So you cannot give somebody access to things that you don't have. You can only restrict. And the module map in order to uh, simplify this could even be a proxy in order to uh, use whatever track you need uh, for the, probably just a get track, but uh, uh, to obtain whatever you want. Uh, okay, from, so, uh, so, from so let me make sure I'm understanding the implications of that. If yeah. the module map is a proxy, mm -hmm. that it is not the case that during construction, all of its properties are sampled. Exactly. Rather, when you do the import with the specifier, at yeah. that point, and only at that point, is the specifier looked up in the module map causing the Correct, data. correct. Okay. And correct. That, so okay. That, that approach allows you to uh, make a programmatic, programmatic choice to um, so in, in whatever that, import you need. So in that case, why have the module map even pretend it to be an object? Why not just have it be a simple function? Yeah, could be, okay. could be, but I, I believe for the simple case, probably because we're talking about module map, like I think I want to make the simple case trivial and the advanced case possible. So if supporting a proxy is possible, then uh, the lookup will look on, on the proxy object. Otherwise the lookup will look, uh, we'll use a, a module map and somebody wants doesn't want to create a function and, 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 and do all the, the Wizardry around it can just provide a module map. So is the module map a plain object or is it a map map? It's a plain object. In the modable case. Yeah. Oh, in the modable case, it's a plain object. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chip wants to ask something. Yeah. Uh, it, I, something is, is confusing me. It says class realm. Where is that? Yeah. Oh, yes, it's kind of correct and correct. <laughs> That's from older code I had. Yeah. Yeah, class compartment. Good. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thanks more, for catching that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking compartment so strongly I didn't even see it. Yeah. Yeah, my OCD did not catch that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's strong as but you see, I'm, I'm trying to go for the least amount of code and specification to try yeah. 
like like the proxy like what is the building block that allows us to be, to do whatever we want to build with it mm -hmm. Yeah, it is interesting that you can say, have it either be object, which might be a proxy with a get trap, or a function, and uh, and have the same ultimate expressiveness, but kind of a different okay. sense of what's simple. Uh, I think I would still prefer a function because the function is a really simple function, and when you want to express it as an object literal it's easy, the, the amount of extra um, boilerplate to turn a object literal expressing a mapping into a function expressing a mapping, which is just, you know, um, uh, you know, argument name, arrow, object literal, open square bracket, argument name, um, uh, seems like sufficiently small boilerplate. So my yeah. inclination would still be to go for the function, but it's nice that you can do it either way. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, this is great feedback. I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at uh, what Mod Modable is also doing with their variation uh, cases, which in terms of code reviewability, if, if we have a, I think we need to do some examples of this and, and see how it declines to, and, and maybe my objection to like, or, or my likeness of, a, 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 of an object would go away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, why not? Right. If you do, if you do multiple calls to import, um, they all end up in the same compartment. If yes, yes, and that's something we've been talking a lot about. Yes. Okay. Yes, because you could uh, uh, get the instance of a compartment and do multiple import, and there's we've been uh, having a lot of discussion. Uh, around this. Mudable feels that uh, compartment should be lightweight enough that uh, creating them is cheap and uh, we, you don't have, uh, you, you don't need to reuse them. However, when we go further down and we try to apply them to our use cases where we, um, where we would want to have compartments around uh, most of the modules we have in the system, then they say, oh, we cannot do that. There are, there are too many modules. So it's, I, I was, it's interesting. Yeah, I wasn't thinking so much in terms of reuse for you know, how many compartments you have to create. I was thinking in terms of, oh, these, the, I want to put these two imports into the same compartment with each other. Yes. Uh, and and that, that would have some meaning distinct from having two different compartments. Right. Um, um, so yeah, so in our case, I think in, in the, the, the swing set, it, it opens the door to say, I can freeze the global, and then I have basically the implementation of a frozen realm that we wanted to have, we, we were looking at. It's not a frozen realm, it's a frozen compartment, but it's everything it, inside it, is, it behaves like a frozen realm. Hey, what's and then I, yeah, as long as we're sure that the uh, lexical scope is not mutable, uh, or is not visible mm -hmm. from one import to the other, then 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 we're okay. Um, so I think by uh, by accident, currently we it's not the case, uh, but we've that's never that's we've that's never that's actually that's tried to make it mutable. Yeah. Doesn't importation so, introduce something into the global scope? No, it doesn't. Yeah. If not it's frozen, it can. But it, if uh, yeah, it, it, nothing it, prevents a, a module from it, from exporting to the global scope. Yeah. So if you really wanted to reuse, like what I'm targeting is uh, is easy, easy. I, I want to make this as simple as possible so it's usable in many places, easy to read. Um, and uh, so, uh, okay, let's make it lightweight. Let's make it wherever you have an import that you, you know, change the line and then you have security applied. Uh, and if you want to reuse then, uh, okay, create a compartment, freeze a global, and then go ahead with multiple views. And I think you can cover both cases quite easily. In, in that case, then, when you have uh, two, in, two separate imports into the same frozen compartment, are there any 
any way something that happens in one of one of the modules could influence one of the other modules? So uh, yes, because since they share the same import namespace, right, uh, and since modules can have top level state, if foo and bar both import module baz, and baz has top level state, now foo and bar can communicate. Mm -hmm. through the that. modules themselves contain imports, right? Then they can they can import a shared. That's right. Okay. Yes. That's really but well, that's actable between that's, that's, two that's different why it's such a disaster that that modules have top level state. That's <laughs> one, one of one of the worst concessions that uh, in the history of of struggle over the soul of JavaScript was allowing top level state in modules. So Jeff, I had one question about um, if so if we import if a module appears in a, a parent compartment import map. And then we re-import that module in our compartment, like we, we provided in our import map for the child compartment. Yes. Um, what is the relationship between the globals of the child compartment and the globals of the parent compartment in regards yeah. to that module? Yeah. Um, the globals, what do you mean? I, I mean, each compartment, the parent compartment and the child compartment both have their own set of globals attached yeah. to that compartment. Right? Yes. Yes. So if they both import module foo. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the instance of module foo is from the parent compartment. So would no, that no, be no, the no, same no. instance? It's, it's not. It's not. Uh, no. No. The, the instance is not. Is not from the parent. No. It's a. It's a separate instance. So the oh, okay. child. The compartment has a. Has a, is seen as new instance. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Like, Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Isn't this the same? Doesn't this preserve the confusion that we were just complaining about with XS? <laughs> Whether when you use the module specifier string in an image, yeah. it creates a new instance from the static module. Yes. Whereas when you just pass it through in the module map, not as the argumented import, but as something that one of the other modules imports. Uh, then it's passing through access to an existing instance. Um, well, it, 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 how how could I pass it an instance in this case? So the um, uh, so you can so the module map it says specifier to specifier, and right. I don't know what a specifier is. I know what an oh, it's a string. Is. I know what an adjective specifier is for yeah. many different adjectives. Um, yes. Uh, like relative specifier, absolute specifier, bare specifier, yep. and module location, which is not a specifier. So I don't yep. know which these are. These are all specifiers because we don't get into the wizardry of dealing with the specifiers. It's the parent or the, the, the code that is actually calling the compartment is uh, won't uh, to provide a resolution in their um, meaning or whatever environment that whatever it means in their environment, a specifier to the child uh, to to the, the compartment that has been created. So, if in my environment I have access to dot forward slash foo, and the compartment wants to import foo in 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 its code, it doesn't import foo. Um, uh, I can pass a, a mapping that says foo colon dot forward foo. And that's all there is to it. There's okay. Now uh, are they getting okay, so so let's stay with this example. Yes. Are they getting access to your module instance? You're not getting access to your it's only the resolution. And that's where we break from the creation process to the resolution okay. process. So if you're not giving access to module instances, I don't see how you're wiring up uh, imports between compartments. Um, what do you mean? In, in order to do least authority linkage, mm -hmm. got to be able to have a module foo in compartment A when it says import bar obtain access to a module instance of bar made in a compartment B. 
Okay, I think we I think we need to write it, but I th I think we we're compatible here. I don't think there's there's an issue. In, in this I don't case. see how to express that because you're not yeah. passing through accesses in this mm -hmm. API. You're not passing access to instances. Okay, I'm not passing access to instances. I'm passing access to uh, modules that have been tamed. So I'm giving my foo to the fellow that. Uh, that, are you giving uh, my foo the code, or are you giving my foo the instance? Okay, let's let's take an example here. Let's take this guy, and I'm not going away from what um, uh, uh, Mudable is doing, right? So, uh, so this is I would call um, I would create an instance of uh, foo instance. Okay. Okay. And I would import foo. Okay. And that's let's say this is uh, in main. And in foo, I'm doing uh, import bar. Okay. Import um, bar from bar. Okay. Something like this. Now, the module map that I would see as an attenuation is foo wants to import bar. So I will say, okay, you want to import bar? I'll give you bar, but I won't give you the real bar that's the global. I want to give you my attenuated version of bar. Okay. And are you giving that I could provide? And, and, and are you giving them access to code or are you giving them access to a module instance? Giving them access to code that is, is that has been written with that intention of attenuation, yeah. But that code is instantiated in the new compartment. Correct. Uh, so how? So the, the the expressiveness that I need that I'm not that I'm I think I'm purposely not seeing mm -hmm. is how do I give foo when it says import bar from bar. How do I give it access to a bar instance that has been instantiated in a different compartment? Right. So you what you okay? So you want you want to link instances? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, if you can't, because the thing is, only instances have any authority, and in right. order for instances that have different authority to interact, they have to have been instantiated with different authority. Okay. You know, that's something that's something that um, I believe, I don't think it's possible with Mudable. I don't know. This, this, this is in the legacy world where one acquires authority through importation. Yeah, this is, yeah. In a non-legacy world, I would uh, basically, I wouldn't, we wouldn't need compartments at all. In a, in a full non-legacy world, we would just program with pure modules. Um, right. The... So what, what, what would be the code, what would you like to see here, uh, Mark? Okay, so first of all, my impression is that the, the thing that Modable does is it does give you, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that Modable gives you access to instances across compartments. Uh, because their light bulb example wouldn't work otherwise. Okay. Uh, and this is, but this, this is where the confusion arose, which is if the name was provided as the top level module name, then it was being reinstantiated. Whereas if it was being passed through the module map, it was designating an already instantiated instance. My best theory on that was they, they do lazy instantiation, that it is source code until the first compartment imports it. So one, an experiment that I haven't done, it, but I thought I saw. We look in their source code by what we talked. And the same module, see. yeah, though, the same module must be instantiable multiple times with different, in different compartments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why, um, that, that's, that's my use case. I wasn't thinking about some uh, apparent instantiating a module uh, and doing some wizardry on it to, yeah, interesting.
So how would you do the uh, uh, attenuation work? So the um, so 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 where you where you have I don't understand I don't, this is me coming in not knowing about any of this import map stuff. If you had the module map, if instead of it mapping bar to the string dot slash bar, it instead just map bar to bar. And okay. above you you imported um, import bar uh, uh, from you know dot slash bar or wherever you want to get it from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's your attenuated bar. Okay. And um, and and then okay. And then now your now your bar name uh, is mapped in the import map. Yeah, now it's not mapped to a string. It's now mapped to a to a an, an already imported module. And I don't know if that's a thing, but. Uh, so the, 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 if you say, if instead of, so by saying import bar, um, what you've gotten is the default export. Yeah. Which probably if you, if there's, right. a, there's another thing that's probably closer to what you wanted to say, which is import star as bar from. Yes, yes, that's, that's, yes. That, yeah. that, that is, that is, that is what I meant. Okay. So, yes. so, um, uh, so if, if on the first, if, if on the second line under the comment main, you say import yep. star as bar. Yes, yes. Okay. So now, so that's interesting because that is the module namespace object. As they right. Are. Module namespace object is an exotic object. It's necessarily, right. um, uh, I believe, uh, so every, everybody correct me if I get this wrong, but it necessarily has a fresh identity that's one to one with the module instance. Yes. Okay. So that means that A, it's a natural thing to use as a capability for designating the module instance, because it actually is a capability to the things that the module exports, and its identity is exactly one-to-one -one with the instance. Okay. It also has no prototype, and it also cannot be modified. Right. Is there any... Uh... If this is allowed in, at, at, in, in this position in the map, is this something that can be uh, verified? Uh, you know, because the module map is not a, is not a a type. So, it would, it, is there a way? Is uh, there is there a reason to put some kind of restrictions there? Uh, actually, uh, ACMA script uh, the the spec itself says that um, whenever a module is imp importing. The, um, the object that is used um, uh, in the entry has to be a, a module namespace. It cannot be an object that looks like one. It has to be. Oh, interesting. Okay. Ah. And it actually throw like, like breaks if, if it just has something that looks like one. Uh, it has a very clear respect for what one is. So, sir, what, what is the code you can write that it that would work on a genuine module instance and break on a non-module instance? Oh uh, no, like I mean that's that's internally, but in, in Node.js, uh, with loaders when we were experimenting, ah. at some point that that was um, I, I believe um, um, made more conforming, or you know it became. Um, necessary to actually ac expose internal uh, utils to test for something being a module namespace or not. Okay, so the, the, the thing that's always very dangerous in putting those kinds of type tests into the semantics uh, is uh, the danger of breaking membrane transparency. Yeah, it, it, they they do seem like a good match for a capability for the module, um, just because of the restrictions we can put on them in the host environment, yeah. uh, and the fact that they don't allow communication directly, although they allow access to the members. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so another way to think about the module map uh, is actually very 
So if we think of the module map as, instead of it as, as an object, if we just think of it, whether we do it this way or not, as a function from absolute specifier string to module instance, uh, it's... Well, I Do, I, I think, Jeff, you were saying that it would just be all specifiers, like whatever the specifier string was, uh, so that we uh, could do our own math within that function? Yeah, I believe or, so. I, be, I believe so, because um, looking at what is happening in, in, uh, in Node versus the browser versus the module maps uh, proposal, there's, uh, I understand that Node can go a little bit deeper uh, because it has access to the file system, but with the module map in the browser, uh, they already know as as a precondition for that proposal that they cannot go, uh, they cannot do so so much so all of that wizardry. So, okay. um, so in order for the for bar to just to be a relative specifier to be the specifier that the code says, you would all if you added a refer argument, so that it was a function from a refer and a relative specifier. Or, or let's call it a raw specifier. This is a specifier. Because it could be, yeah. it could be bare, it could be bare, it could be absolute, it could be relative. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, just, it's just like the import uh, uh, method itself uh, mm -hmm. is, is, is mm -hmm. called uh, uh, in the spec, it's only specifier, they don't say what it is. But, but, but if, if a, the module foo, um, uh, if the module foo imports, um, the, if there's multiple modules in the compartment, then, and the multiple mm -hmm. modules are something that the, that, that are, you know, is, is let's, let's say we're just trying to emulate the conventional slash algebra. Right. So if you've got multiple modules that represent different points in a local tree that when something down the tree says import dot slash bar, you've got to know who's doing the importing. You've got to know yes. something about who's doing yeah, the importing. Yeah, exactly, order. exactly. That, that was why I was trying to express it as a cascading resolution process. Okay. So, um, if somebody, if, a, if instead of a compartment, somebody is trying to do an import, then it delegates to the parent and, and it goes up the chain, right? The parent what? Uh, parent compartment, yeah. So, the, so each level of directory would be a, di a distinct compartment object? Uh, not of directory, but in terms of, uh, of, of authority. Uh, bear, uh, I'm just concerned about the, the, the slash algebra. Yeah, I, I am too. Yeah, yeah. But so, uh, uh, what we're trying to do is to come up with a very simple API so people can go back and say, I, I need to do something like this. And um, I, I, can, I can in one way solve the, uh, the simple use case and keep the complex use case possible. So, okay, but, um, I don't, but I'm not understanding how the slash algebra is made possible. Oh, because in this case, what I could do, um, my module can say, well, FUBAR wants to import ABC. I can say, okay, I will attenuate this power. I will only say, uh, you know, A is possible and, uh, you know, and I can give the path to A or not and B is possible, right? And then, uh, and then this, whatever, if, if it wants to, to import this, then, um, you know, the left side is what's happening in the resolution that's happening inside of the compartment. And this is the map to what's happening in my compartment. But, but, but if there's multiple modules in that right. compartment, yes, where those modules are at different levels of the tree, the slash algebra tree, mm -hmm. then how does this this, you know, you're providing this map as an argument to the constructor. Mm -hmm. So that, sa that one map is going to be shared by all, by the pr to process the imports 
of all of the modules in this compartment. Okay, who's dot are we talking okay about? so what you're saying is that if FUBAR itself imports something else that it, you know, it, its own world is also daughter slash A, then it would be a conflict. Because uh, uh, save, yeah, okay, because they're not in the same position in the tree. Exactly, because they're not in the okay. same position in the tree. Exactly. Got it. Yep. Yep. This is yeah, what I'm, so this we, is the part. This is the part I'm looking at currently. This is okay. Yeah. 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 Um, this is why I and, and, want you to, to to have the discussion because this is the area where I'm least confident about uh, the whole API. Okay. Yeah, and I I think um, take take these as you want, Jeff. I I don't expect you to implement them necessarily this way, or to specify them this way. But um, if the if the primitive to map from specifier to goes to a module namespace. Uh, then the namespace is the capability, and as long as we have a second argument of what the refer is, or somehow that that map can obtain that in order to give out the capabilities, then that, that's that's all you need to do all the fancy path algebra or whatever else within the mapper. Yeah, but but if so, if somebody like in the case of Mudable wanted to imp, uh, imp, implement like I just want to wrap one module, I understand that the module can want to load other things, but this won't yeah. load other things is already part of the modules uh, that are provided to it. Right. Um, if the compartment, if only one module is instantiated in a compartment, yes, then there's no problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then you don't need to look at the second argument at all. Yes, exactly. Okay. And this is this is what Mudable is doing. It's supposed to be um, and like what they want to do is is to do the compartment at the one module level. No. No. The. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's, what they are doing the there are many modules that can get instantiated without ever appearing as the first argument in a new compartment. Um, but they, they get into this flat module map, which is the boundary to, uh, to the system. They, they, it, the resolution can only happen to that, of all module to that flat map. Okay, but I mean, they have a, a built-in, somewhat broken relative specifier to absolute specifier uh, Algebra just wired into the engine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. I think it's yeah. Um, ultimately, everything re uh, is uh, referenced to the manifest, which is the manifest by itself creates some kind of a abstraction from the file system, but. Uh, that's the problem that that I've seen in their system is, is that okay I'm um, I have this rich tree of possibility in terms of resolution being different at different level of the tree. I have to create a flat map like this in order to pass the uh, the uh, the the modules to uh, the next level. So uh, yeah. foo is always going to be foo. If I want to have another foo somewhere else, I'm I'm I'm, I'm limited there. And and the best way to view this is to look at the um, the default case where what they do in the default case is they pass. If we don't specify in in their case, imagine we have a three argument. So the default case for uh, modable is if you don't specify the modules, yep. what is effective in place is your own compartment map. Yeah. And that, it means that everything instantiated into that module will go against your own compartment map. Yeah. yeah. I noticed, by the way, in your API that there is no dot map. Is that, is that on purpose? Uh, yes, yes. I was, I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking about the chaining uh, approach of resolution instead. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm, so then, yeah, I, I, it, that feels weird. The compartment map. But I wasn't thinking about this case. We we wrote down about um, do it in two lines, 
and then pass whatever you want to do to the next level. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm really interested in the, the idea that the, parent, the, in the creator of a compartment can do import star as something from that and then use that module namespace as a way of passing the instantiation. Yeah, that's really That's good. really cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Because yeah. then, it, then it puts the, the parent uh, just in the realm of regular JavaScript again. It's not doing anything special with a map yeah. uh, as far as it knows. Yeah, yeah and, and the thing too is, is, is in this, this proposal is trying to uh, find a combination of existing building block uh, instead of, uh, mm -hmm. like in this case, like it's it's a, a compartment API and it's very, very simple to to specify, right? And and but we can find a combination with other aspects like this, the the export map, uh, uh, to 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 have suddenly like combining these two things a lot more richness to uh, uh, what we can do with it. Yeah, because then here the export map comes for free because if parent can't import it, then yeah. you can't. Yeah. to a module. Yeah, and we defer the, the rest yeah. to the platform, like do the right yeah. thing. People That's will beautiful. understand, people will understand this. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, I guess um, from, from my perspective, I, it felt more intuitive to do it as an export, not as an import and then export. Um, and I guess, um, you know, just opening that question for, for discussion further. Um, I, I do understand that sometimes you want to run code um, on the modules. Uh, and, and, you know, um, I'm not sure if importing or exporting is the difference at this point, but whether or not you're going to attenuate a module as part of the early error phase, um, as in, you know, if you import a name from a module, that does not export that name, um, then then your graph should not execute. Um, that that is part of the um, right, right. Yeah. So 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 because right. we go we go here to the dynamic import instead of uh, going to the static case. Yes. Yeah, and, and I, I explored the idea of undefined as as uh, a name that no longer exists in the graph. Uh, but I think it's a static analysis um, con consideration for development tools um, that if they do type check compartmentalizing modules, um, they would want to assume that this phase ends um, and you know, they're giving developers the right insights by static analysis. Um, before before you know any code executes, right? Uh, so so yeah. So so that's a, that's a very interesting. The static use case is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, top level weight is coming anyway. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's it's still not the same thing, right? It's you know, I think we all have a uh, we all seen cases where top level weight is, is, is can burn people, right? I, I think it should not come, but. <laughs> well, just looking at the amount of tests in Test 262 related to it, it's the amount of use cases that, or corner cases that it opens is just a bit uh, scary. Yeah, I mean, it solves problems, but I mean, every idea can solve a problem. The, on, the only idea that doesn't solve the problem is a bad one. Um, but, but bad ideas can create more problems than they solve um, yeah. if they solve something. The Daedalus syndrome, right? Uh, sorry, the Daedalus, Daedalus, oh, yeah. the uh, the Greek, the Greek yeah. god, <laughs> the father of Icarus, yeah. who uh, was the engineer at the court of the King Minos, and uh, every solution he was bringing would create a new problem. Yeah, and then uh, his whole life, the whole methodology is about this guy solving problems that he keeps creating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope we don't do that though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think you um I I really like your uh stack case. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully better syntax and you know a more complete proposal and you know. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, guys, um, it sounds like we're at a good lull and it is already, we're 20 minutes over. Um, so I, if, um, so let's first stop recording, which I will do now. Okay.